Hello and welcome to your Monday Technical Market Outlook for July 20th, 2009. This is Patrick Serezna. As always, we start off with a weekly chart of the S&P 500 going back several decades. And when we plot an 80-week moving average on there, it has done a very good job to depict every bull and bear market cycle that we've gone through. January 2008, we crossed below that 80-week moving average when we began our thesis that we were in a bear market that should last many months, if not more than a year. We still anticipate at this stage that after this rally finishes, there will be still one more consolidation in the markets before we have a bullish cross back up to start the next bull market leg. When we take a closer look at that S&P 500 using that spider exchange traded fund symbol SPY, uh, we, um, we're always anticipating that measured move to come into the support at the 86 to 88 zone. And if we were going to have a range bound summer, that was the level where the market was going to hold and bounce off that level. We got that obviously with a very nice bounce off of there and coming right back into the 93 96 zone on the upside the observation we're making here though is that the degree of the rally and the the, the speed of the rally has actually been very significant uh, if uh, all selling is actually contained uh, to just some shallow pullbacks then really we can't rule out a push uh, on the upside all the way up into the 90 to 100 zone on the S&P we still would consider that to be a range bound market as it would make uh, only small progress above its previous highs uh, but in fact uh, the market may have the momentum to make that push just to review our key points our thesis since January 2008 has been that we're in a bear market that should last many months if not more than a year we added to that many months ago by suggesting that uh, this could, um, bear market could end as early as the fall of 2009 but can realistically extend into the 2010 time frame we continue our thesis of range bound summer with upside uh, being contained to the thousand level but we are anticipating numerous false starts for both the bulls and the bears so just the way we nearly broke down on the downside it rushed a whole bunch of shorts to panic in in the same respects when as we break higher it's going to force a lot of panic to buy back in and the market pro probably will make a false start on the upside and then come right back down again Longer term investors still need to be cautious, avoid overexposure to the markets, and only short term actively managed trades are prudent. Next year, I want to take a look at the technology weighted NASDAQ 100 with exchange traded fund symbol QQQQ. And the one thing for many months that we've been discussing was the uh, relative strength of the uh, NASDAQ over the S&P 500. And even during the last consolidation that occurred over the last month, the sell-off never even approached the May lows of around the $33 area. And as the market reversed and went higher, the NASDAQ is already making higher highs so that we continue to believe the leadership will come from this NASDAQ index. Our, our first upside measured move targets on the NASDAQ are up in this $38 to $40 zone and that's where we'll be looking to take profits on our trades. Next, I want to take a look at the U.S. dollar index, which is the uh, charting of the U.S. dollar against a basket of currencies. And uh, we've uh, seen in this uh, market coiling for the last month, waiting for it to finally commit to a market move. It's now given us an indication that it may want to break on the downside well, following our anticipated move all along. But it has still hasn't actually made the technical breakdown. We are looking for it to break below the 79 level to give us confirmation that in fact the downside move is underway to complete a move all the way down to the 75 76 zone at minimum on the downside so we're waiting for that move but all of that is all hinging on the fact that uh, we have further breakdown below here if it's suddenly we come in with strong US dollar strength come Monday uh, realistically um, we, we may just continue to churn in the sideways pattern so we're, we're looking for some further confirmation Next year, I want to take a look at gold bullion using the Spider Gold Trust Exchange Traded Fund symbol GLD. And uh, we were talking about the importance of this 89.90 level, that if support levels were able to hold in there, that we couldn't still rule out uh, an upside break of this pattern. And the support levels did hold. And with that U.S. dollar starting to weaken, we are seeing a technical breakdown of this uh, downwards flagging formation um, on the upside with this technical move. We're looking for further confirmation above the 92 level on the upside to, to show us that there may be some further follow through but if the US dollar does continue to break down and gold makes a move above this 92 level we could probably see follow through not only back up to 97.99 but in fact there might be enough strength in this push uh, to go even up to the 101 to 103 level on the upside. 
Next year, I want to take a look at crude oil using the United States Oil Fund, which is exchange traded fund symbol USO. And crude oil had a very dramatic uh, five, six day sell off off of that 38 to 40 focal point up above. And we were talking about how important it would be for the bulls to dig in and hold that 32 to 34 line in order to leave the window open for potentially still higher crude oil prices. We did see those support levels hold and now we reversed a little bit and are pushing back higher. Now we're gonna see a critical um, uh, moment where the, the crude oil will probably rally here into this 35, 36 zone. But if in fact we have a downside reversal off that zone, that in fact that will open the window for continued consolidation. In the same respects, if crude starts to rally off of this low and follows through above the 36 zone, not only will we probably break the 3840 zone on the upside, but maybe even achieve a 42 to 44 zone upside target, if not even higher. So we're going to get some critical information in terms of this week's price action. Finally, I want to take a look at a broader basket of commodities using that PowerShares commodity ETF symbol DBC. And uh, we widened the focal point on the downside to the 20 and a half to 21 zone uh, to reflect that downward support zone. But in fact, we found support there and reversed on the upside. And just like crude oil and gold, if in fact uh, the U.S. dollar breaks down and we uh, we may see that uh, a robust follow through back to retest those previous highs. Uh, and so uh, we're going to be watching carefully uh, if the domino effect on all these markets starts kicking in and whether we do actually get the, the, that follow through on the upside. For those of you that would like to learn about how we trade stocks, options, forex and futures, you can uh, register for our free two hour educational event on Monday, July 20th from 7 to 9 p.m. You can register by going to poweroptions.com. That was your Monday Market Outlook. Thank you for joining me.